Hello folks, welcome to Between Awesome and Disaster. This is your host, Will Carey. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. Um, today on the show uh, is uh, someone who's been uh, a, a key fixture in my life for the past 10 years that I have uh, been a comedian in New York City. Uh, today I'm talking to uh, the owner of the Creek in the Cave in Long Island City, Queens, uh, Rebecca Trent. Uh, if you are not familiar with the Creek in the Cave, it's a, what I think is a pretty pivotal part of the New York City comedy scene. It is the venue that if you want to get on stage and do comedy, that is the place that you can go and do it because they have free, they've had free open mics every night for as long as I've been there. And in this current time frame with uh, COVID-19, with restaurants uh, only being able to do takeout and delivery and places of assembly and comedy clubs being closed down, uh, this is kind of an interesting, uh, and by interesting I mean scary time for business owners, specifically in these field in these fields. And Rebecca had reached out to people about wanting to uh, talk about this on on podcasts, and I of course wanted to uh, reach out as well. So what you're going to hear today, and when we talk about the split of awesome and disaster on the show, and, and Rebecca mentions it towards the end here. Uh, we're, we're leaning very much heavy on disaster at this point, but there's also steps that can be taken to uh, resolve this issue, and we, we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end as well, as well as kind of what her experience has been uh, as a business owner during uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. So uh, if you guys um, enjoy this, or and, and I encourage you uh, to share it widely, because uh, this episode more than ever is more than other episodes I do is very focused on current events and actions and things that could be, could be and need to be done now in relation to uh, businesses staying afloat in New York. So, uh, and, and, and even if you're not in New York, I feel like this is, could be applicable to other cities as well that are dealing with the pandemic. So I'm not going to spend too much more time, uh, uh, up front here, you will kind of get into the meat of it in in my conversation here with Rebecca. But if you uh, if this resonates with you, I encourage you to to share it with others so that we can kind of get the word out about things that uh, Rebecca and I talk about in this uh, episode. And we are available wherever you get your podcasts. So thank you for listening, and let's go to my chat with owner of the Creek in the Cave, Rebecca Trent. <laughs> Yeah, um, I've I've had to as I uh, I've had to along with a couple of my other friends who who do podcasts very quickly figure out uh, multiple different ways to do stuff remotely. So I uh, apologize for yeah. for that. Oh no, don't worry about it. Um, I'm uh, surprised at how uh, quickly we took over Zoom. It seems like they're uh, the only ones that are uh, making anything during this. Yeah, I, I've heard the I've heard the word Zoom like three to four times an hour for the last two and a half weeks. Right. I, it's crazy. I'd never heard of it before. And suddenly everybody knows about it. Yeah, exactly. I wonder if they're all in there, like working from home offices, just high fiving, uh, <laughs> this, oh, they have to be this situation. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so I wanted to, I, I've been my, the first question I've been asking everyone when is, uh, I do a, a, like a quick mental and physical health check, because I imagine you being, a. a a restaurant and a, and a venue owner, I feel like you're sort of on the front lines of this, of this pandemic right now. Well, certainly not in the way that medical professionals are, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm doing deliveries myself. I'm, mm -hmm. uh, some, some, some days I'm in the kitchen making the food myself. Um, I, I think that probably for the remainder of this time, we'll, we'll likely open back up tomorrow or the day after, and we'll just start doing activity kits like build your own fajitas, build your own tacos, mm -hmm. because mostly the people that are, that are still ordering are um, people in the neighborhood, are people, families in the neighborhood. Yeah, that, that, that makes <laughs> sense. I, I've had a couple places uh, up in Astoria have done that. Uh, several of the, uh, the Asian restaurants on, on Broadway have t come up with quick, buy a big bag of frozen dumplings or frozen whatever. You can basically right. do it yourself, I guess. Right. To, <clears throat> Because I guess you, because kind of have to adapt or die in this moment. 
Sure, but I think that also like a, a lot of the things that, that we're sort of discovering is that a lot of parents are being quarantined alone with their kids for the first time in a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of dads who's you know, the moms are nurses, the dads are doctors. And so it's a single parent household for the time being. And they need activities to do with the kids to keep them inside and to keep them from going insane. And, you know, this isn't a, a suburb. LIC is these apartments are not large. <laughs> so, you know, everybody's really right on top of each other. So having activities and things to do are helpful. Sadly, a lot of our kitchens are very small. I can't, my kitchen can only hold one person at a time. And I feel like I have never done more dishes than I have in the last week. It's insane. I imagine so. So you're, so the Creek is effectively, you're effectively running the Creek solo right now. Is, is that what I'm So right now, my boyfriend and I are doing deliveries. Jamie and I are running counter and then Aldo and I and Jamie are working kitchen, depending on who's available and when Um, we have not had any of our employees who took public transportation have not been in the building for probably three weeks at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if you remember what was going leading, going on leading up to this, but um, we, I actually came home from Houston on the seventh, the Monday or the Sunday prior to the, uh, to the lockdown. So I ha- when I when I came back, I kind of had a good idea that this was going to get real serious real fast, and so we started asking folks to start biking in and stuff like that very early on. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know, but I'm starting to feel a little weird about asking one of my employees to come through because he's riding all through Queens, and Queens has been hit really really hard. Yeah. Um, you know, Elio and I are in the building, so our our level of exposure is very limited at this point. And uh, Jamie lives right across the bridge in Greenpoint, so she walks to and from, and it's really not that difficult. So I think that what will likely happen and for the for the immediate time being is that we'll just have it be the three of us um, and just see if we can hold up with demand and start donating food if it looks like it's going to start to go bad and make sure. sure that the inventory is, is, uh, is going to the right place. If it can't go into the, into customers mouths, it's got to go into somebody. Um, so, you know, all of that. And there's a tremendous amount of effort uh, going on in my neighborhood, LIC relief, um, little chef, little cafe and uh, new city hope. Uh, one of the local churches um, they're all working together and working with local small businesses to uh, create grab-and-go situations for people that are destitute. I know personally uh, folks have just sort of come in and said to the, into the creek and said, I'm hungry, I don't know what to do, and I just tell them to wait right where they are because we have a barrier set up so nobody can get more than six feet into the, the, into the space. Mm-hmm. Um, I just ask them to stand where they are and we give them rice and beans and chicken. Um, just a real good, healthy, like hearty, you know, construction worker type of meal. Yeah, um, absolutely. and so, so far it seems like everybody's been taking care of everybody, but you know, we haven't gotten even close to the worst of it yet. Yeah. Like I, I feel like they're, they're, they're talking like the, the peak is like still like, like weeks and weeks away. Like I've heard. So we're about three weeks away from the peak. From what I understand, it's going to be late April, early May. Mm -hmm. So three, four weeks. Um, And the timeline keeps getting pushed back a little bit, which is actually kind of a good sign because the farther away the peak is, that means the more flat the curve is getting, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. Um, But uh, no, actually, that doesn't make sense. I don't don't know. But basically what we're expecting, what did they say today? Another two weeks? Um, So he's saying... I, I don't see us getting out of here before May. I don't, I, I, there's no way that they're going to be able to re- release the lockdown before the peak. That doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. We're going to be under this suggestion, but I mean, I don't know, Will, have you been paying attention? Like the other thing that's starting to concern me, I mean, Elio's, Elio's mother lives in uh, Rhode Island. They're going door to door in Rhode Island asking people if they've been to New York. They're, they're starting to, you know, they're starting to shut the gates of state to state. And yeah. that's, that's scary. Yeah, I have, I have heard that, that they're basically, if anyone has been in New York, they're, they're asking them to like quarantine in place. Yeah, that's... Shelter in place. Yeah, and the, the idea of, uh, the idea of like, oh, you were, you're, you were from this city, go stay away, is, is frightening to me, Abs- absolutely. You know, I mean, people didn't really love New Yorkers before this. <laughs> <laughs> right. But we're in trouble. <laughs> 
we're all just going to start adapting Connecticut accents, whatever the fuck that sounds like. I don't know. It's, it, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit daunting. It's scary to me. And I'll tell you, I, my mom um, actually lives in an area that is predominantly um, uh, not a uh, year round property. She's a year rounder there, but mm-hmm. for the most part, she's one of like maybe six houses in a neighborhood of about 60 or 70 houses that are, uh, uh, that are year rounders. And when this started to happen, the city count, like their, their, their group of, of elders or officials or their board of directors or how, however they're, they're made their community board, whatever it's called, they mm-hmm. voted to shut down the bridge. And they legitimately said, if you ain't from here, get the fuck out of here. And if you are from here, you now's your chance to get here. And they still got two cases of it there. Oh, goodness. So, gracious. yeah, goodness gracious. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's they, like... they closed the bridge to the whole island. That's in that's insane. It, it, it's like it's like literally every kind of zombie apocalypse uh, pre scenario, like before things get like really bad, like Resident Evil level, is is what a lot of this is reminding me of. And what really pisses I know, really, right? Yeah, and what's really pissing me off is uh, my mom is uh, in she still lives in Calvert County in like rural Southern Maryland, so she's right. she's pretty like disconnected. I think they've had they they've only had one case in the entire county but what's in their county uh-huh. yeah but what makes me angry is uh that a lot of her, she's telling me like i'll call i'll call her she tells me all these stories about uh friends of hers who are who are either like lifelong republicans or like shacked up with uh trump people in in one case and they they seem to all think that this has been blown way out of proportion and that the actual risk is not as severe as the TV well, will make you sing, and that we, makes me furious. We are Americans, and good Americans listen to their president, and they treat the word of that president like gospel. That is what we were all raised to do, especially the generation above ours. Right. They're, they're, they're raised to believe that this man is the smartest man because he's the man that, was, that, was, that, was, that the strongest nation of the world chose to be their leader, right? So right. now we got this idiot talking a bunch of nonsense and everybody's listening to him and taking his word as gospel to the point where they're eating aquarium uh, chemicals to, to try and stave off the evil, the evil disease. It, it, what's really interesting is watching Fox News grabbing their dick right now because they were so wrong in the beginning mm-hmm. and they were so, uh, they almost to the point where it's criminal to be honest with you because they had the science the science is always there we know how fucking viruses work we know how spreads work we know how contaminants work we know the cdc has been working these scenarios for freaking ever we've been watching movies like outbreak for generations right so we we know scientifically speaking how this shit goes down we know how viruses work but they downplayed it to the point where they are now worried about litigious action they're now worried that family members of the dead are going to come for them and honestly, if they do, it will be a boon to journalism everywhere because now they'll have to tell the truth. Oh, I agree 100 percent. I would absolutely love to see that, especially the, the fact that you can now say that somebody listened to what the president said and now they're dead. Yeah, it's, it's exactly it's it's surreal watching like the car crash like it's like watching a car crash everything is slowed down and it's like i cannot literally believe like the things that i'm 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 seeing and, and hearing and especially when he goes on twitter and brags about how great his ratings are during the press briefings i'm like what well, level of mental illness I know he's so delusional but the point is is that he's got the highest approval rating he's ever had since he's been president Ex- exactly. That's a fact. The polls are saying over 50% of folks, and, and sometimes it's as low as like maybe 49%, but damn near half of everybody's going, no, yeah, he's doing an okay job. Like really at this point, I feel like people are going like, am I alive? Well, if I'm alive, I guess he did a good job. Like it, it, there's <laughs> no critical thinking happening. And watching this dick measuring contest go on between Governor Cuomo and President Trump is just disgusting. Like mm-hmm. I, I watching him fight with the leaders of the states and, and get into finger pointing and blaming and all of this stuff is just so disgusting. It's such a waste of time. And I just, I, I wish that he had the capacity to put his ego aside and stop with all this petty bullshit, but you know, 
here we are. I don't, I like, it just, it is what it is, you know, but looking to your leader right now isn't a reality. It's just there. They, they, he literally said, you guys are on your own. Yep. That's like, all right. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> I'd kind of always felt that like, I kind of like, well, <laughs> I was never one of those people who thought the government was ever going to like per- help me or, or like, or like if I was in trouble, I could look to government, but it, it literally, literally hearing someone say, well, you're, you're, you're kind of on your own is, is it's a slap in the face. Yeah. It's not, it's not, it doesn't, it, Jimmy Carter would have never said that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just such an odd thing that he's, 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 he's the only way in which that he's comforting is, is by lying. Instead of saying, we're going to get through this together and here's how we're going to do it. And we're going to be smart. We're going to be proactive and we're going to, you know, he downplays it. He tells us that we, we all want to get back to work. And he's right. We do. We definitely do. And I don't mm-hmm. want to see the economy crash. That would be terrible for, um, well, personally, I think mostly just for my dad. I, I like <laughs> a lot of the, a lot of the economic issues are, um, it's interesting to watch individuals. I've ever heard this uh, sentence be said maybe four or five times since it started. I'm not that kind of adult. It doesn't really affect me. And what they're saying is they don't have stocks. They don't, they didn't, they never invest in the stock market. So it's, it, it doesn't really affect them so much. But it, 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 watching, watching these guys sort of scramble between economy and mortality is very, it, it's very interesting. Um, you know, my, my dad wants to go back to work, but he can't. And he's, he's, you know, if he were to sell everything that he owns right now, he would have probably lost half of his portfolio, if not more. And I, I, right. I assume most people who invested heavily are kind of in the same, kind of in the same boat. And so, you know, I, I feel for them. It's not without a measure of empathy. Like he's, he's, he's a, a, a you know, semi-retired fella. He's, he's, he's scared that his, you know, what he's going to have left to live on is going to be significantly less than what he expected. Uh-huh. And I, I, I feel sorry for him. You know what I mean? But at the same time as a small business owner, like, who is considered essential. So I'm quote unquote allowed to be open, but also like not sure if ethically I should be open. Right. Um, you know, that's a, it, 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 it's really hard for me to like boohoo that situation. Cause it's like, shit, you know, I didn't even have money to put in the stock market. So yeah, that's not affecting me, but this, this situation, I mean, Will, you know how many people work here? Like I've I got do. one fucking employee, you know what I mean? Like everybody's, yeah. I like, and I don't know how to, I can't help them. I can't fix this situation. And there's no small business owners are control freaks by nature. There's a reason why we don't want to have a boss. And mm-hmm. the truth of the matter is, is that there's, there's there, there, not only is there no fixing this, but I don't know what the comeback is from that. I'm literally looking at grant applications and small business loans and stuff like that. But the Creek wasn't in a good position going into this. I mean, like Chelsea, Chelsea and I have been working closely enough for you to be aware of, of, of right. some of the, the challenges that I've been looking at, uh, even over the past, like, you know, two years. I mean, honestly, I'll be honest. I feel like ever since I came off of tour in 2016, I haven't been able to get this business back on track and it's making me crazy to the point where it's like, God damn, you know, like I like every time I feel like I've got to step forward. Like I felt like I was starting to make moves. I felt like Gangfest um, in Houston was going to help offset all of this stuff when we were going to get back on track for the spring. Like I was set, I was ready to go. I was doing hot yoga every day. Like I was, you sure, know, yeah. and this stuff hits and it's just none, none of my plans matter. None of my ideas are executable. You know, like I, I went online uh, a couple of days ago, just started asking everybody like, okay, like let's do a Creek awards and we'll try and do it in the summertime. And then, I got to do some kind of like baby festival, like a one-off festival in July. Let's start planning that. But it feels, it, it feels, it's difficult to inspire people to start making plans for stuff like that because, you know, a lot of us so are town, a lot of us aren't sure if we're coming back. A lot of people are saying now that they've killed all of the cultural and, and restaurants and all this stuff, what's the point of even being here? I did a roll call yesterday on Facebook to see how many uh, New York comics stayed in New York City because a hell of a lot of people got the hell out of town. Yeah. But the people that stayed, you know, I was surprised at how many people stayed. Surprised at, like, you know, how many funny people stayed. Mm-hmm. I'm joking. It was just there's <laughs> so many people, like, stuck around. And, and, and it's, like, awesome. What do we do with that? Because we're all here and we're all stuck. And a couple of people are, are setting up walks. Like, they, the people that are in Harlem are setting up um, socially distanced walks to go, like, in a spread out group to go walk. And we've got, you know, a couple of, couple of people in Long Island City. And, you know, I... 
I'm watching the, I mean, the, I, we were trying Amy Shanker uh, put Power Hour online. Uh, did a live stream of Power Hour last week, this weekend. And, you know, when I turned it on, there was some guy's penis on the screen. And I think he was pouring ketchup on himself. And Sounds immediately right. I thought it was Ian Fidance, but I was, I was wrong. It wasn't Ian. It was some other guy. Uh-huh. And, uh, and then I, uh, I don't know, like some guy like chimed in and just started throwing out racial slurs and stuff. So, I mean, it got to the point where she had to just mute everybody and slowly like unmute the people that we knew. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I don't know. It's, it, I wish that we could figure out a way to eliminate the Reddit and 4chan energy from all of this technology. Like, as we're using it instead of having to have this like trial by fire bullshit. Cause it yeah. sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, we feel like we're trying to have a comedy show and then these dipshits show up and start navel gazing, uh, with racial slurs. And it's just bizarre. And I don't, I guess those are probably the Trump supporters that are, uh, pretty sure this isn't real anyway. Right. Yeah, I would I would imagine so. Or just, or there's a certain kind of like nihilistic energy that exists in like, uh, the fringes of the internet that I think just wants to like whatever, whenever something right. like sincere is happening, they just want to burn it down because they hate themselves. That's what I personally yeah. think anyway. Um, so yeah, I wanted to. I mean, that's essentially why Reddit exists. Yeah. So I wanted to to ask you because we're 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 touching on a few of these things here because I feel like uh, the creek is specifically in in the in this axis of two really vulnerable for uh, vulner- vulnerable areas right now and that and that being a uh-huh. uh, our, our restaurant and then also live comedy venue which i've started like i don't know if you read that article that roy wood jr wrote but he was kind of like pontificating yeah. about what comedy like, even is this over like does we'll comedy like even exist future. i know yeah it was i mean i i don't know i mean i think that i'm lucky enough that my venue is small enough and I can space people out enough that maybe people would still come. Mm-hmm. But if we had 20 people in that audience and everyone was spaced six feet apart from each other, it's not going to sound the same. It's not going to feel the same. Having a packed crowd is a part of live performance and there really is no way around that. You know, we're all going to feel like spoken word poets by the time this shit's over. You know what I mean? I, I and know. Even them, exactly. even they get crowds. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I like the, the truth of the matter is, is that I don't know if people are going to be willing to come and watch live shows. I feel like it might end up just being that comics are performing for comics and <sighs> Well, I don't know. I, well, what do you think? I don't know. Well, I've done plenty of performing for other comics where I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll, I would do. do sure, that that's in the a saving grace. But, like the creek can survive off of that. Yeah, <laughs> we've well, been doing that for years. Right. Well, because I and and again, touching to some of the other things you you were telling me about, like you're like if people are like, I'm hungry, I don't know what to do, and you're just giving them that hearty like middle of the day construction meal. Like that reminds me. I don't know if I I doubt you're gonna rem- remember this because it's been almost ten years since I've. I first met you, but when I first got here, I think my first uh, Thanksgiving, because if anyone listen, listening to this doesn't doesn't know uh, the creek, there's like an orphan Thanksgiving at the creek every year, and I remember meeting lots of very cool people my first year, like Sean Sean Patton, and I think James Adomi might still have been around. And I remember as I was leaving, I don't know if you remember, I remember this, but I, I remember saying, uh, thank you, Rebecca, and you kissed me on the cheek. I remember that very vividly. <laughs> and then I also remember the first time I ever like tried to go and like pitch a show because like a friend of mine had to did a festival and like gotten somebody from comedy central's number. And I was like in that stage where I was trying to like scrape by to get, make anything happen. And I remember, Uh I remember I had, I was working at Starbucks at the time and I'd gotten very, uh, very sick and left early. And I still took the hour G train ride to the Creek to pitch my show. And you were like, what are you doing here, man? (laughs) <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I it, it you can be sick. It's it's okay. You could uh, we 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 could do I'm this another day. That. You don't have to do this now. Go home. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, okay, I remember. Okay. <laughs> um, but then coming to like, because I feel like again, like what what is so great about the creek and why it's always it's uh such in, important is that it has that that community it has that community vibe to it like it has that that sort of like uh 
like Goonie, I, I, I will like Island of Misfit Toys kind of vibe to it where we're all just kind of. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that's part of the reason why I'm a little bit nervous. Part of the reason why I did a roll call, part of the reason why I'm trying to figure out who's here, because like, I mean, you and I both know we got a handful of homeless kids that hang out here all the time that are comics. Right. We have a handful of folks that, um, to be really honest with you, need to have regular access to alcohol or they might die kind of comics. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and and I'm not trying to be like dramatic and weird, but you know, like coming off of coming off of the level of alcoholism that, that, um, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm, I'm nervous that people are going to get sick and stupid and not take care of themselves. And there's so many of them. And there's so many that like, I feel like seeing them every day was our way of going like, Hey, you matter. It matters to us that you're alive please don't fuck this up, you know? Right. So like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to name names, but there's, there's like six or 12 folks that I see on a very regular basis that I feel like if I don't see them, that you're worried. Are, if not, not me specifically, but I mean, like, I feel like if they're not seen at the Creek, if the Creek isn't a part of their daily life, then, then, you know, yeah, I'm worried about them because I, I feel like, you know, like you said, Island of Misfit Toys, some of these, people think that it's okay to just fall asleep under bags of ice instead of getting an air conditioner. You know what I mean? Some people are sleeping in rooms that don't have windows. And yeah. I just, I don't know. Like I, I get nervous because the home life of the folks in New York, a lot of us sort of train ourselves to not worry about the quality of our home life because we're supposed to be out all the time. We're supposed to be doing all the time. This is New York. This doesn't sleep for 24 hours a day. Let's do this. Yeah. So now people are home 24 hours a day and they're starting to realize what a shithole they live in and how unadaptable some of these spaces are and how some people are living in alcoves and not even proper bedrooms. And I like and and a a lot of people like that's that's my first apartment in New York. I wasn't living in a proper bedroom. I wasn't living in a you know what I mean? Like a lot of people. Well, actually, I, I was. But I had I had friends that came from college that weren't. And, you know, it, it's not it. it it's not, it's not easy to be home. It's not as easy to be home 24 seven in New York as it is in LA or oh. as it is in, in the suburbs. It's oh, just one, a different experience. You one, know, uh, I, I understand that 100%. If, if I was having to shelter in place in either of my previous New York city apartments, I would be having a much substantially rougher go of it. Um, it would because oh yeah no kidding yeah because my first uh, because my first apartment in in New York uh, in Sunset Park was effectively a room with a shared kitchen that was uh, split up illegally and I didn't le- and I didn't go into the kitchen because my old roommate's cat would attack me um, it was it was like a dire situation so yeah and especially like and I and like and I feel like comics in particular and especially like comics that are like in that very beginning level stage of being in New York or very beginning level stage of even being a comedian. If you come from somewhere else and, and it's kind of like the grind and the like suffering for your, for your art thing, but then having to like, just be in your surroundings. Yeah. People I am. There's, there are some people I could see not faring well mentally or physically. I mean, when comics first move here, sometimes I'm the one who provides them with their first towel. Do you know what I mean? Like we're really talking about bare bones living. And right. I, I just, I, I feel like, I feel like it's just, I don't know. Like, I don't, and I don't know how to like, what kind of outreach needs to be done because I'm being asked to take care of my Long Island city community, which I'm happy to do. Certainly. I love Long Island city, but to be perfectly honest with you, a lot of the people in this neighborhood, in the immediate neighborhood, anyway, I'm not talking about Queensbridge, but in the immediate neighborhood, sure. a lot of these people are a lot, a lot better off than the comics are that I work with. So I don't know. It just becomes a it becomes a challenge because it's hard to know like who to help and when and how and yeah. I don't. I mean, like I'm just really hoping that these kids are going to be vocal when it gets bad and they'll start telling us what they need. You know what I mean? That's that's my hope. Yeah, I, I would I would hope I would hope so because this is not a, if and if any of the people Rebecca and I are talking about are listening to this, this is not a time for pride. Um, uh, if you're if you if you're hurting, tell somebody. Um, and, and this and is also like, if you have a sense of pride about it, work it out and trade. Like we're not, nobody's gonna, you know what I mean? Nobody's going to make you feel like a charity case right now. This is, that's, this, that's not a real thing. Everybody, you know what I mean? Like everybody's got, <sighs> every, everybody has something of value that they can offer during this situation. So 
if it becomes a situation like that where you feel like, oh, I just don't want to take, like, there's ways around that. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I've got a Ludison has come in and, and set up stuff for me. Stevie Lou is still coming through and helping people out. Jamie just walked in the door. We're about ready to knock out the kitchen real quick. Jamie, say hi. Awesome. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> good to, good to, he- so, good to hear from you. <laughs> people are still trying to hold it down. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, and I'm glad to hear that. Um, I'm curious because you were in, um, I'm curious how the, how the like, leading up to the quarantine played out for you because I know you were in Houston because skink fest South was getting ready to happen. And then what was that's the, right. and then what was like the realization that, cause I know initially it looked like it, it, it might happen. And then what was the conversation around? Like, we're going to have to move this to September. Well, you know, we had a, a, a lot of conversations leading up to it. One of the first conversations that I brought up was like, Hey guys, are you paying attention to this? What do you think? And there was a very Fox news esque response. And Mm -hmm. it was very like, it's just the flu. Everybody's going to be fine. Um, I'm overreacting, blah, blah, blah. Um, But uh, you know, I, and then I remember I got on the phone with Charlie Satella the day before they said it was uh, that, that South by was being canceled. And what, what Lewis and I had, because it was, it was Lewis, myself, Bobby Hutch, and Omar that went uh, to Houston this last go round. And you just dropped a bunch of money. Um, and uh, they all, uh, you know, we basically said, as long as South is happening, then we're happening. We're going to be good. Mm-hmm. And when South by announced that they were canceling, it was like, shit. Yeah. So, you know, and then ultimately, let's be clear, it wasn't safe for us to do it. Obviously, we couldn't have done it. Mm-hmm. There was no way. So we basically just wanted to wait until the city of Houston, until Texas, until the federal government, until whoever said whatever they were going to say, because it was obvious that this was going to get locked down beyond what we wanted to do, beyond postponement. Right. So we immediately got on the phone. A hundred percent of our vendors are back on board. I think we maybe lost two, two artists, maybe three that haven't at least verbally said that they're available. Um, and so the, and I feel like getting an extra six months to build the festival is in a way kind of a gift. Mm-hmm. Um, just, you know, we get to do that much more, um, booking and we get to find, you know, we've got some really sick food trucks that are coming through. Like we, I will, I mean, it was done. We, we built an entire freaking festival. It was ready to go. It's like, you know, just like Moon Tower was. Well, I mean, even more than Moon Tower because ours was like so imminent. It was like two, three weeks away. Right. Um, and then so we so we rescheduled with the venue. We rescheduled with the with with the city essentially permit wise and stuff. And I mean, it looks like everything's on track. But then we also don't really know what's going to happen. So I'm answering a lot of questions. Like agents and managers want to know, you know, are these dates locked in stone? And it's like, well, I mean, they're booked, but the last dates were locked in stone. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what you want me to tell you. Like, I'm, I'm not a scientist, uh, but if I was, I would probably say don't schedule anything for fall. <laughs> yeah. That's my guess. <laughs> but I mean, you know, I'm not qualified to really say that. So I just got to wait and see and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you know, I, I don't even know what to hope for. I like, just, what do we, what do we want? A vaccination? I'm terrified of that. Uh, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I have yeah. no idea. Yeah, I don't exactly know what the solution is is going to be. I'm just hoping that it eventually exists. Uh, I have one more thing I want to ask you because I know I know you got to go shortly, and I would love to at at a f- future date. I would love to ha- to have you on my show again so we could talk about like you know comedy and like the creation of the creek going to full time stuff. I would love to talk about that. Oh please, that would be lovely. I would love that. Uh, excellent. So we'll, we'll, let's definitely do that because on, and you, you probably know this, but you know, as for me as a, a comedian in New York, uh, the Creek is very important to me and you, you're very important to me. So thank you, uh, for oh, having well, a place. I appreciate that. Uh, so, I gotta say that you and Chelsea have both been so supportive of what I've been trying to do. And I feel like you're one of the people that like, as soon as you saw it, you got it. Like it, it, like this place, like it was built for people like you, you know? Yeah, I think, I think so. Um, at <laughs> one, one, 100, 100%. Um, have you been in, uh, and the last question I'll, I'll, a- I'll ask uh, related to 
to COVID is, have you been in touch with other clubs in the city? Uh, what What's kind of like the general consensus speaking to any of those folks? I would say minimally. Uh, folks are just trying to figure out what they're going. It's a lot of the Roy Wood Jr. questions, you know, going forward, what is this going to look like? particularly for the ones that don't serve food, particularly for the folks that really aren't considered essential business right now. Um, there's, uh, let's see, I, the last time I talked to, who was it? I think it was Matt Frost. I think it was Justin. Um, I was talking to um, one of my friends and they had been, they had been in touch with a lot of the folks in uh, the club ownership and management positions in New York City, and between the information that he had and I had, we estimated that about 30 or 40 percent are probably going to close. Now, I'm including the alt scene, Brooklyn spots, and stuff like that in it mm-hmm. too. I'm not talking about Caroline's. I'm not talking about Gotham. I'm not talking about the Stellar. We're talking about the smaller ones, the mom and pops, you know, like Floodlight, like me, like yeah, uh, yeah. QED, you know. So. I mean, the, the impact's going to be grave. And the other part of this impact, which is going to be fucking horrible that we haven't even really touched on yet, is going to be the number of folks who are now out of work or sort of like quasi-retired or early retired who are going to decide that they want to be stand-up comedians. And that's <laughs> going to be a wave of garbage like we've never seen. <laughs> It's going to be like New Year's resolution stand-up comedians only for you nailed it much longer. Oh, only for like like fifty plus year old uh, confident white guys. That's what it's going to be exactly. Mostly. So so for those guys, and this is this is my bu- my business plan specifically for for this group. Again, like uh, we get one of my get one of my friends who's not involved in comedy who has to wear a suit to work. They sit in the back and just take notes so everybody tries a little harder and then uh and i think I, I think it was justin williams that tweeted this if anybody uh says uh mm, so what else have i got here on stage or uh just throws out a premise with like a uh there's something there right uh automatic ban for six months uh <laughs> <laughs> i love it i think that i think that having little suit plants in the back of the room is actually a smart idea i should start doing that at the open mics here Yeah, I think that would be a... Do you realize, Will, that physically within the last four days, a person came through the door to ask if there was an open mic happening? It doesn't surprise me. I get calls every day. (laughs) Calls I get every day. But someone literally walked in on Friday. Oh, my gosh. That... Is the mic still happening? (laughs) Like, (laughs) no... Get away from me, beef. Go, go, figure, go, stop spreading I this around. I just threw a cup of bleach on them and, and <laughs> threw them out the door. I think that's the, I think that's the uh, appropriate response. Um, is there anything uh, we can plug here as far as like uh, resources or anything I, I can help uh, signal boost for you, Rebecca? Um, well, there's a couple of things that are really important for us to take note of just as New Yorkers. Um, if you see it on Instagram, if you see the petition, if you see any information on it, please repost, retweet, send the information out there on the proposed rent freeze. That is supposed to go into effect hopefully tomorrow. If we don't get the votes, if we don't get that passed, I do not know what's going to happen to a lot of us, myself included. Uh, so that rent freeze is going to be real important for us to plug and get out there. If you live in Long Island City, the creek is going to be open at the end of the week, and we're going to do uh, family-style kits and stuff like that. I'll have more information on that. Keep an eye out on LIC eateries. We're doing our best as the Restaurant Association uh, continues to get more and more information. LIC eateries and Taste of LIC, we're both trying to make sure that the LIC and Astoria restaurants are getting uh, that are staying open are getting the information out there uh, to their customer base. And for the love of God, do not order on Seamless or Grubhub. Call the restaurants directly. Those monsters take 30% of, our, uh, of the money. They cover none of the sales tax. It costs us so much money to use those third-party apps. And I get that they're easy, but calling us saves us so much. And it's going to be the difference between some of these restaurants being able to stay open or not. Alrighty, yes, that one one hundred percent. I I just I once I realized that I think because of one of your posts, I'm like, I'll, I'm calling. I'm going to like restaurants' websites if they can order through there. That's excellent. Every every yeah, chance I can good. get. And 
uh, thank you so much for Re uh, Rebecca. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk to me, and I look forward to getting to do an episode where we can kind of talk about comedy and and stuff we like in in lighter times, which I hope are sooner a, rather than a different than later. kind of awesome and a different kind of disaster. <laughs> exactly. This is the disaster exactly. portion, and then the awesome That's one right. will be we'll next. Do the time. awesome portion later. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, great. Well, well, thank you so much for having me on. And uh, I look forward to uh, being able to be at least six feet away from you, but eye to eye sometime soon since uh, we're in the neighborhood. Absolutely. The feeling's more than mutual, Rebecca. Thank you so much. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, great. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Okay, folks, that's our show for today. Thank you so much for, for tuning in. As always, you can follow uh, Rebecca on Twitter at Rebel Cave. You can also follow uh, The Creek and the Cave at Creek and Cave um, for updates on uh, their uh, business hours as well as uh, more information regarding uh, any sort of like uh, action or rent freeze that might um, actions that are uh, occurring in New York State. Um, and then also, if you... Uh, and this might go well for for anyone who's listening to this. If you uh, are ordering a takeout, uh, if you're ordering delivery, and the place you're ordering from uh, is still open for you to call, or if they have a website and you can order through their website, that's the way to do it because that'll help with their uh, thinner profit margins. As uh, because uh, I learned recently how thin the profit margins are in restaurants. Reading an article about um, Tom Colicchio's uh, uh, restaurants. So if you're able to call or go through a restaurant directly and don't have to use Seamless or Grubhub, that'll be the way to do it. So thank you guys uh, again for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this and feel like someone you know needs to hear this, we are available wherever you get your podcasts. I also have over 130-something other episodes for you to listen to. And uh, uh, I also want to give a shout-out to my supporter on Patreon at the awesome producer level, Mary Beth Mooney. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. And I hope you guys are staying safe. And and if you're able to, I hope you're still supporting local businesses and, and keeping in touch with uh, people that you care about because that's going to be one way that will uh, we'll stave off uh, a few more weeks of, uh, of quarantine. So thank you guys for being here, and I will see you next time between awesome and disaster. Stay safe, everybody.